Good morning, Scallywag Shpoo here, and uh, this is not going to be the typical uh, fun, goofy video type of thing that we normally do here. Instead, this is going to be kind of an update video, um, just to let you guys know what's going on. Um, so, a few weeks ago, we did our Godzilla vs. Kong review, and during that video, we mentioned that we would be back with... A, not only a Mortal Kombat review, but also that we would be returning to a three-time-a-week upload format. And that has not happened. And I've been asked by a number of people why that is. So I wanted to not only let you know what is coming up with the channel, but also let you know why that did not happen. Um... And, and this is <laughs> not exactly something I really want to do, so bear with me here. Um, the short version of the story. So, when I was a child, I had a heart condition called SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. And, excuse my pronunciation there, but uh, basically... Um, that kind of just stands for sort of an irregular heartbeat or a fast heart rate. Um, to put it bluntly, on machine, so in a hospital, hooked up to monitors, my heart rate clocked out at 310 beats a minute. That's the fastest it ever got on machine. It's not the fastest it ever went uh, in general. That's just the fastest they ever caught it on a monitor at the hospital itself. Um, at home... There was at least one time where it clocked out right at around 400 beats a minute. Now, in a child, this really isn't that big of a deal. Kids are, you know, their their hearts are a lot stronger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The older you get, the more dangerous that becomes. And basically, when I was about 24 years old, my father, who was only 55, passed away from a very similar condition that we didn't know he had. Well, when I was 14 years old, I had what's called an ablation. So basically what causes the SVT. So there is something on your heart called the AV node. This is sort of a power conduit that goes from the top to the bottom portions of the heart. This electrical impulse goes down that conduit, which causes your heart to beat in rhythm. Well, mine had a branch on it. And every so often, that electrical impulse would get caught in that branch and begin to loop, causing my heart rate to speed up. Uh, the ablation, they would go in and burn off that branch. Uh, problem solved. However, they did tell me that when I entered, you know, neared my 30s, that it was entirely possible that it could return. Fast forward to my 30s, and um, it, it, it would flutter so every so often. I would skip a beat here and there, and whenever I would have an event where my heart rate would take off racing, I could always feel it right before it happened. I could feel it coming on. It sort of felt like my chest was vibrating, if you will. That's the best way I can think to describe it. Um, when this would happen or when I would have a full-blown event, uh, I would have to bear down and, you know, push all the blood into my head, turn my face red. That would stop the event. Um, so occasional flutters here and there, they would happen. If I felt the vibration coming on, I would go ahead and I would bear down. It'd stop after a few seconds. Well, um, several couple weeks ago, I uh, I went to bed, and I had been laying in bed for about 15 minutes when I noticed my left arm was completely numb, like the whole thing was just tingling. And I tend to sleep on my side with my arm up under my pillow, so I thought maybe I was just laying on it weird or something, so I moved my arm. Uh, that didn't help. And then I felt that all-too-familiar vibration coming on. So I bared down, turned my face red, and not only did it not stop, it increased. 
uh, my heart just started pounding and I mean just pounding out of my chest and getting faster and faster with every beat. I bear down again, still nothing. Continuously harder, faster. This went on for about 10 minutes until I finally sprang up in bed and long story short we called an ambulance. Uh, ambulance took me to the hospital. I spent the next day and a half in the hospital uh, with them running tests. And basically the SVT has returned which okay well we knew it had sort of returned because as mentioned I would have the occasional flutter you know for several years now but never anything this bad um, most of the tests that they ran came back looking okay they did do an echocardiogram uh, sort of right at the end and it showed some irregularities in it um, that was enough to sorry i've got a gnat flying around apparently uh enough to make them uh, want me to wear a heart monitor for the next several weeks you might notice this little bulge in my shirt here that is the heart monitor um so i'm supposed to wear this heart monitor for 21 days five days later and i receive a phone call in the afternoon from the heart center asking if I'm okay because they picked up an event. I didn't even notice it. I noticed that I was skipping a lot of beats that, that day, a lot of flutters and stuff. And anytime I do have an event, there's a button on here that I push and it kind of flags that area within the monitoring. But the event that they were talking about, I didn't even notice. Um, so I told them, you know, I've been having a lot of flutters today, but other than that, yes, I'm okay. So the next day, I receive another phone call from them saying that I had had another event the night before. Again, didn't notice that one either. And that they had decided to go ahead and schedule an appointment with the electrophysics department at Cox Hospital in Springfield. So it didn't dawn on me right away, but it kind of made me realize, you know, here here's this group of people that while I'm in the hospital decided, you know, well we'll we'll do all of this, you know, once you're out of the hospital, we'll have you come in after the monitor, or, you know, that type of thing. So I didn't really feel like there was too much urgency in the situation. Now my brain suddenly is going to they wanted me to wear this thing for three weeks but after only five days they're like we can't wait any longer we need to get this done now that's a scary thought well the electrophysics department calls me and schedules the appointment but they can't get me in until may the 20th and this is all happening on like april 29th or April 28th somewhere in there so three weeks out so now I'm scared <laughs> and um, you know they've given me medications and things that I that I'm taking but in the meantime the events are getting worse um, over the last two or three nights especially they've gotten particularly bad uh, not last night this is sunday uh what is today the third i think so sunday may 3rd that i'm shooting this um friday night so this would have been friday the first um i didn't get to bed until about seven o'clock saturday morning because i was having so much trouble the night before all night it was just it 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 felt like an event was about to happen again um bear down i got it to kind of settle down but maybe five ten minutes later it would do it again bear down it would stop five ten minutes later it would do it again and every time i'm getting this horrible pain in my chest that's getting worse and worse and worse and worse with each event uh, about five o'clock i finally try to go to bed but every time i would start to doze off 
it would do it again and I'd wake back up again. My arms, both arms, this time were going completely numb. Um, I looked it up, you know, what's this whole tingling arm thing all about? And that is a symptom that I never showed as a child that apparently is part of SVT. So, so at about, I don't know, 11 o'clock last night, so Saturday night at 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday, uh, knowing that, you know, the heart center is only open Monday through Friday from like 8 to 4.30, I decide I'm going to go ahead and call them and just hope that there is some kind of, you know, on-call doctor who can call me back. Fortunately, and this was just blind luck, uh, the on-call doctor this weekend was actually the cardiologist that I saw that got this whole ball rolling while I was in the hospital. So that worked out very nicely. And I, I told him what's been going on and how it's getting worse. And they, you know, being able to see the monitor on their end, had also seen this as well. I, I asked him point blank, you know, you only waited five days. I only made it five days out of a 21-day study before you were like, nope, can't wait, get, get an appointment set. So I asked him, I'm like, you know, is, you know, this is where my brain went. Is that correct? He did assure me that no, that's not the case. Uh, at least this is what he's telling me, you know, whether or not this is true, who knows. But um, basically what he said was, you know, obviously you can't get in there for three weeks. So there's no sense in doing the monitor for three weeks, then waiting for us to get the report back scheduling an appointment with you, then having you come in, then making the referral. It would be two two months plus before I would be able to get in if they had done it that way. Taking my history, plus my father's death by the same condition, plus the fact that we now know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is returning, he said, no, we just wanted to, you know, we had enough evidence to get you the referral, to get you in there to get this thing done, confirming that I will... Uh, have to go that route. So, um, so that was comforting. So my next question to him obviously was, well, you know, it's still three weeks before I can get in to see these guys. What do I do in the meantime? You know, it's getting worse. It's happening nightly at this point. And again, this is a thing that killed my dad. Um, Excuse me. Uh, so he's. Um, I, I I hopefully will hear something back tomorrow. But they he's going to try to get me in there sooner. Um. So what does this this all mean? Uh, I it means that I will be having heart surgery. <laughs> uh. And the surgery doesn't scare me. It's not. It's not. It's not an open heart situation. This is. It's an ablation. So basically, what this is, um, I mentioned that that my AV node has a branch on it. So this is where they take these catheters. So it's like these wires uh, with like a little cattle prod on the end. They put one in this arm, two in my left leg, and one in my right leg. They kind of snake it up through the veins and arteries and things. They go up to that branch and they burn the branch off. Simple. Uh, when I had this surgery when I was 14, I spent one night in the hospital and I was released the following morning. Uh, I went hunting with my dad. If that gives you an idea of you know how you know not a big deal this surgery is. Now it's actually done on a completely outpatient pace, uh, outpatient basis. Uh, excuse me. But that's not the part that scares me. The part that scares me is the time between now and then. Um, I, I've never been more scared in my life. Just putting it bluntly. Um, I'm afraid to go to sleep at night. Afraid, you know, of... Am I even going to wake up in the morning? Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what more to say other than that. 
uh, and it, you know, he he tells me, you know, well, the likelihood of a full blown event, you know, killing you or causing a heart attack or something is, you know, it, it's 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 a fast, but but it's still you know a good rhythm, so it's not going to you know cause problems. And that's where I remind him, you know, this is the exact condition that killed my dad when he was only fifty five years old. Um, I am 43 currently, and uh, so I know he's saying these things, you know, kind of in a way of, you know, don't worry about it type of thing, but uh, it's a real possibility. And when I brought that up, you know, there, it's not something that he can really deny, because, well, it happened. It could happen again. So he basically told me that... Uh, if I do feel, you know, like if, if an event starts to happen and I'm bearing down and it's not calming down or whatever, that I'm immediately to go to the emergency room. They've got medications there that will make it stop, you know, make the event stop right away. But, oh man, just knowing that, okay, that's an option. That's great. But anything can happen. <laughs> so, um, so as for the channel... Obviously, things are kind of on hold at the moment. Um, you know, there, there's there's been times where I've come really close to shooting, you know, a little something just to kind of take my mind off of things or whatever. Uh, but whenever I kind of get down to it, you know, like as I'm getting into it, I'll have a flutter or whatever, and it just kills the mood immediately. So, um, So just for now things are just on hold until this whole thing is taken care of um so there you have it that's what's going on that's why uh that's why i haven't been on here and that's why i'm not going to be on here for a little bit um hopefully sooner than later um worst case scenario i will meet the electrophysics department on the 20th hopefully sooner um and we will get an ablation scheduled and as soon as the ablation's over hey all is well uh, so i'm like i said i'm not worried about the surgery i'm not worried about the aftermath of the surgery i'm worried about between now and the surgery so uh you know if you're if you're the praying type, you know, maybe, maybe keep me in mind for that type of thing. Um, if you want to send some well wishes, you know, hit me up on Facebook, hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm not even going to bother editing this. I just want to throw it out there and I know I'm rambling and I'm, it's gone on for far longer than I had anticipated it going on, but, uh, that is what it is. So, um there you have it so keep me in your thoughts keep me in your prayers send as many good vibes as you've got my way i'm gonna need all the help i can get so thank you for listening and uh yeah we'll we'll see you soon <laughs>